Let's do car news of the week in 5 minutes. Starting off with the next generation BMW M3 and M4, the G20 generation. It's supposed to be a 2020 model year car, hopefully coming later this year in 2019. Car Magazine had an interview with the head of BMW's M division and he confirmed some very, very important details. First off, the M3 and M4 will be offered with a manual transmission. I think that would make it one of the only vehicles in the segment to still get a manual transmission as a brand new generation vehicle. He also confirmed that it will have all-wheel drive, similar to the all-wheel drive system found in the BMW M5. Essentially, um, you send power to the front wheels, but it also has this like drift mode rear wheel drive only where you disconnect the front wheels. Even more than that, which I find actually even more interesting, is there will be a purely rear-wheel drive only version. So it's not even all-wheel drive with a disconnect, just rear-wheel drive. They kind of still want to build that pure driver's car manual with rear-wheel drive. I personally think that all-wheel drive absolutely makes sense. Um, it made sense in the M5 given how much power it is. Also with the M3 and M4. I spent a lot of time in F80 M3s, specifically the competition pack car. And I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's very powerful, very fast, but quite tail happy. It needs that all-wheel drive to help put the power down. Speaking of power, next generation G20 M3 powertrain figures confirmed too. It's going to have the 3 liter S58 engine that was found in the X3M and X4M. It'll make pretty much exactly the same horsepower. It's 473 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque in base trim mode. And then in the competition package version, it pushes it to 503 horsepower and still 442 pound-feet of torque. So we'll have a over 500 horsepower M3 of all-wheel drive. You can still get the manual. I think it sounds like a really, really good combination. I've heard good things about this new generation of 3 Series. Really sounds like the next M3 and M4 should be awesome. Moving on, there has been a camouflaged AMG GT GTR prototype scene, um, and it's slightly different. It's got this really, really aggressive hood on it with these really deep air extraction uh, vents, like heat extraction vents, and a little intake vent in the middle. It also has quad exhaust tips out back. So there's a chance that Mercedes AMG might be working on a Black Series model. Black Series is usually the most hardcore, expensive, intense, most powerful, limited version of an AMG vehicle. I think the last time that there was a Black Series model was the SLS Black Series, and it was freaking awesome. I really love the AMG GT platform entirely. Um, the GTR Pro just came out recently, and that was supposed to be the top one, but this prototype might mean they're going to do a Black Series. Power definitely would have to be increased, and I expect to see at least, I think the AMG GT 63S four-door makes 630 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque, so more than that, maybe over 700 horsepower for an AMG GTR Black Series to go up against things like the GT2 RS. Either way, um, it's been spotted. I don't expect to see it anytime soon, but if it does happen, that would be pretty awesome. It would make sense, because they haven't done a Black Series in quite a while. Next up, we have Uber, and um, this is car-related, because Uber does vehicle ride-sharing, car-sharing. Uh, they reported their quarterly earnings revenue i guess but there wasn't much revenue because they lost 5.2 billion dollars a lot of it is associated with their ipo um which is like a one-time thing it's not going to be recurring but still burning through 5.2 billion that is a massive loss it's crazy i don't think they've been profitable at all since they like since 2016 a while ago um pretty sure they've gone through like over 16 billion dollars in losses they were still trying to phrase it in a nice positive way they did hit 100 million monthly average users which is a lot of people using uber um and like trips or something that went up by 35 percent so there's some nice metrics but i think you can't get away from that 5.2 billion dollar net loss in one quarter i'm sure almost everybody watching has been in an uber or a lyft or some sort of ride sharing it's been ex extremely convenient i mean for me going from home to the airport when i don't want to leave my car parked there overnight or over a trip if i'm in a, a different city i don't want to rent a car it's easier than trying to find a taxi just use the app and it charges to your credit card immediately it's it's really cool but i mean that's that's a lot of money loss um it's crazy i feel bad for anybody who had uber stock because i think it dropped quite a bit too all right we have 30 seconds left do some personal car news i ordered some new wheels ended up going with some 20 inch brick stents um not nothing too insanely crazy expensive i just bought a condo so i don't have money to throw at insane forged wheels or anything like that but uh i'm going down to 20 inch wheels a lot of guys the base rs7 wheel is a 20 running slightly wider than that some people go to 20s um running 20 inch tires with a little tiny bit more sidewall and then um have a lowering module coming from my air suspension so i can lower it in drive modes 
So dynamic will lower a little bit, comfort will leave in normal, and I can actually vent it out completely. Oh, timer's up. That's five minutes. See you guys.